What is going on everybody? Today we have a quick video about a small little flash drive. I've been seeing some people talking about it online where it plugs directly in the USB-C and then there's no cables or anything. It's just a little flash SSD drive. It's this little guy right here. So I picked up one of these to test it out. I've only seen people getting a little bit of record time. They haven't really tested it to the fullest or they're only testing it with the Pocket 4K. So here I have the 6K Pro. I'm gonna test it out, see if it works, see if it might be right for you. It's a cheap option, so it'll be really cool. Um, not sure if I would trust this thing for professional work, but for personal work, YouTube stuff, maybe B-roll stuff where you can really monitor what you're recording, or maybe just a nice little backup option to have with you if you get into a pinch. So let's check it out. We need some scissors. Oh, Ugh. so it's just this, this little guy right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug this in, fire it up and see how it goes. So for the test, I ended up using the 6K Pro and the regular Pocket 6K. And the way I tested this out was I added a light that was changing colors. So it made the scene more dynamic, so it wasn't just a static picture, because that's how the quality is being determined, whether or not it needs to use a higher bit rate or a lower bit rate, based on what's happening in the scene. And here are the results that I got. At 6K, 16 by nine, at 2398, none of the recording options worked on this flash drive. I wasn't able to get anything past a few seconds of record time. When I bumped down to 6K 2.4 to 1, still at 2398, nothing worked except for the Q5 option. Q5 ended up recording for a long time until the card actually just ran out of space and never failed. Then dropping down to 5.7K 17 by 9 at 2398, most of the options didn't work, but I was able to get 12 to 1 to work on constant bitrate and Q5 worked at constant quality. Once we dropped below 5.7K and dropped down to 4K, I was actually able to get all of the recording options to work here. So my guess is that this device would work great on a Pocket 4K, but everything above 4K was failing for me. So everything below 4K, even three to one, was recording until the drive was full, which was great. And then Q0 through Q5 also worked great at 4K, 2398. So everything below that also worked. 4K down to 3.7K down to 2.8K, and constant bitrate and constant quality. Everything worked there. Moving on to off-speed. Under constant bitrate, the only ones I was able to get to work was 4K, 8 to 1 and 12 to 1 ended up successfully recording. And then the only thing I could get to work other than that 4K one was dropping all the way down to 2.8K. 5 to 1 worked at 60 frames a second and 8 to 1 and 12 to 1 both recorded successfully at 120 frames a second. When I went to constant quality, the max record resolution at 60 frames a second that I could get was 4K at Q5 and then had to drop all the way back down to 2.8K for anything else I wanted to record. And the only thing I could get at 120 frames a second was Q5 at 2.8K. Now, when switching over to ProRes, you actually have a lot more flexibility. Cause like I said, the 6K didn't work for this card, but all the ProRes options worked when we're not shooting high speed. Anything at 2398 worked great. When you add in the high frame rate option, things started to fail a little bit, but it still was pretty successful overall. The only thing that would fail was ProRes HQ, ProRes 422 did not work at 4K 60. And then when you drop down to 1080, ProRes HQ did not work at 120 frames a second. Now I know you're looking at a lot of different numbers here and a lot of different stats, but I have a whole spreadsheet that I built if you're interested in specific things I didn't cover in this video. And I'll link that down in the description below. But one final disclaimer on this, even though it worked in a test environment, it works on paper, I don't know if I would trust this in the real world. So if you're doing this just for personal things, I think it could work. If you really cannot afford anything else and you know you're only gonna be shooting ProRes, then maybe, but just a disclaimer, at least bump up to an SD card. If you can afford a little bit more, an SSD is gonna be more reliable than that. And the most reliable form of recording on the pockets are the CFast cards. I've had SSD drives fail on me, SD cards fail. I've had a lot of different things fail and some of them for no reason, not just write speed. Unexplainable things happen with SSDs and SD cards. And I've seen a lot of other people talk about it, experienced it myself. So I've switched everything over to CFast cards and I now use my SSDs that I used to use for recording for editing drives. If you need some more drives you can record on for personal things, or if you just really wanted to test this thing out and you want to know how it can perform, I've tested it for you. You can check it out in the link down in the description. But one thing is intriguing to me about this. If they're able to get decently fast write speeds on a small little tiny drive like this, I think that things like this could show up in the future. It is really nifty just to be able to plug this into the side of the camera instead of having to wire up an SSD. So if they're able to get a little bit more drive space, a little bit more speed, these things could actually be really cool going forward. So. Hope this was helpful for you. I hope you got what you needed out of this video. I like testing out new tech and stuff like this that people are interested in. So let me know if you wanna see something else. If you have any questions about this, let me know down in the comments below. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you wanna see more content like this. 
see you guys in the next one. Peace.